since Star Trek Online's next event is going to be awarding an Epic Phoenix prize token, one of you guys gave me the idea to talk about the top ships available in the Epic part of the Phoenix store. Thank you so much for that, but I am going to be making a couple changes to the original suggestion, the first being that uh, I'm not going to do top 10, mostly because there are only 13 ships available in the epic portion of the Phoenix store, so yeah, it's kind of a bit much. Uh, I was originally going to do top 5, but honestly, for the life of me, I could not decide on a 5th ship, so uh, we're doing top 4 Phoenix prize ships. The Phoenix Prize store used to be where old event ships ended up. Though these days that is no longer the case. In fact, the epic portion of the Phoenix Prize store has been largely abandoned seemingly. And I say that because it hasn't been updated in years. And in fact, during the last update they did for it, they took out a bunch of ships because they eliminated all of the tier 5 ships. Some of which still don't have T6 versions by the way. While modern event ships end up in Mud's Market, eventually, Cryptic has seemed to be very reluctant to add any ships that are currently in the Epic Phoenix Prize store into Mud's Market. And while Mud's Market does have the reputation of being quite expensive, the purchases in that store are at least account unlocks. Whereas anything in the Phoenix Prize store is always a single character unlock. So that, plus the extremely poor drop rate for Epic Phoenix Prize tokens out of the Phoenix boxes, Seriously, I once opened 960 of these boxes and only got one epic token. Obtaining these old event ships for new or even casual players can be extremely difficult. Fortunately for those players, the upcoming Delete Alt Control event is going to be rewarding, among other things, an epic Phoenix prize token. But even with only 13 possible ships to choose from, that can still be difficult to narrow down, so let's talk about the ships that I would recommend you picking up. Now, I'm going to be a little brutally honest here and say that most of these ships aren't very good, mostly because we are talking about a lot of old event ships. Back in the day, event ships were always very toned down in comparison to other playable ships in the game. That is still largely true for Star Trek Online, because you gotta keep in mind, these are still free ships, at least initially. But over the past couple years, Cryptic has released some rather exceptional event ships, like the Hysperian Battlecruiser, or whether you like it or not, the Nidarian Jellyfish. These ships we're talking about today, though, these aren't like those. The epic tab of the Phoenix Prize store is filled with old ships, many of which have not aged well. In fact, a lot of these weren't even good when they first came out. Oh god, I've been rambling for like two minutes. Okay, let me hurry this up. While these are old ships, some of them do still have some valuable consoles or traits on them. That's going to be the big draw here, so that's why I'm going to be talking about these four ships specifically. This first one, which I'm sure is no surprise to anyone, is the Denorius Bajoran Interceptor. Now, compared to the other ships that are also available with an Epic Phoenix prize token, this one actually has pretty decent stats for a playable ship. It's a small, nimble escort ship, so it's going to be rather squishy, but you can get some nice speed out of it. It has a 5-2 weapons layout and decent bridge officer seating. The only real downside is the specialization seating, which is two pilot seats. Pilot isn't nearly as bad as when this ship was new, but two pilot seats is still a bit much. Especially considering that, since this is an event ship, it will not be a full pilot ship, so you will only have a Lieutenant Commander pilot seat, and it will not have pilot maneuvers. Its starship trait is unremarkable and therefore not worth talking about, but it does have a decent experimental weapon on it, called Voice of the Prophets. It deals physical damage, has a 6 second recharge time, and that physical damage is dealt as a 2 km AoE. So if you can get a bunch of your enemies clustered together in a gravity well, you can hit up to 3 additional enemies with this experimental weapon. This AoE is what once made this the meta choice for an experimental weapon. While that position has since been claimed by other experimental weapons, I would still put this in my top 5 experimental weapons of the game. It would probably be like right at that number 5 spot, but still. Voice of the Prophets, though, still isn't going to outperform something like the Gull-type Psionic Resonator, which is available on the Cyclone Patrol Escort, which is a sea store ship, meaning you would be able to get that experimental weapon, which is better, available on your whole account whereas picking this up out of the Phoenix Star would only be a single character unlock. However, the real reason you want to consider this ship is for its console, the Domino. This console is extremely popular on energy weapon builds due to its ability to buff bonus all damage and firing cycle haste for energy weapons. The buff's initial duration is only for 10 seconds, but with each enemy that you kill while this console is active, it adds another 2 seconds to the duration of the effect and can occur up to 10 times. Meaning, as long as you're still killing stuff, you can extend the duration of this buff to up to 30 seconds. Which is an impressive uptime for a console. For a long time, for energy weapons at least, this was considered one of the most powerful consoles in the game, second only to the DPRM. 
However, starting earlier this year, this console has been largely overshadowed by the Fleet Network Array. That console gives an even better haste buff than this one does, and it's available off of the Awani Command Carrier, which is a sea store ship and therefore you can get it as an account unlock. That said though, you can equip more than one console and their effects do stack with each other. So while I would prioritize getting the Awani's console over the Bajoran Interceptors, your energy weapon builds are only going to get better with both, because that's a lot of haste. It's also worth noting that the Domino is part of a larger console set. That's actually true of all the ships I'm going to be talking about in this video. This console set is available on the Tier 6 Andorian, Lethian, and Daywan pilot escort bundles. However, the other three consoles are also restricted to those ships, so you're really not going to get much use out of the whole set. You know, unless you really like those old allied pilot escorts. Currently, the Domino is the only unrestricted console in that set. The next ship on the list is the Krenum Science Vessel. The ship itself is even less remarkable than the Bajoran Interceptor. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a decent science vessel, or at least it probably was at one point or another, but it could be vastly overshadowed by a number of other science vessels that are far easier to get. Like the Chekhov or even the recent Dyson Science Destroyers. Its starship trait, Improved Feedback Pulse, might be okay if you really like Feedback Pulse, but ever since Feedback Pulse was nerfed back in the day and just left to rot on the ground, this really has no value. But the reason to talk about this ship is its console, Timeline Stabilizer. Like with the Domino, this one also features a haste buff for your energy weapons. It's not as powerful as the Domino's, but like most haste buffs, they do stack with each other, so piling this on with a bunch of other haste buffs can be potentially very powerful for an energy weapon build. Additionally, the console's active ability also decreases the cooldown of any bridge officer or captain ability bridge officer times, but it's honestly very low, and honestly you probably won't even notice how much it's actually reducing anything. Additionally, this console's effect will also create an AoE around your ship that's about 3 kilometers big, and it will create certain debuffs on any enemies that are caught with inside it. Mainly, it will reduce their speed, turn rate, and it will increase the recharge time on any of their abilities. Which may sound interesting, but honestly, these kind of debuffs really aren't that useful outside of a PvP setting. And as I've said in the past, I'm not someone who enjoys PvP in Star Trek Online, so I don't actually know if this console would be of any use in a PvP build. So really, the big draw here is going to be just the haste buff for your energy weapons. Another upside to this one, though, is that it is part of a console set, and unlike the Dominoes, this one is actually pretty good. The Flagship Technology Set. This is the set that comes off of the T6 versions of the flagships. So that's the T6 versions of the Odyssey, the Bortosk, and the Scimitar. And of course, their legendary versions. This set also includes the Flagship Tactical Computer, which is also really good for a haste buff and Adaptive Emergency Systems, which is useful for some damage resistance as well as a decent bonus damage buff. And the really nice thing about this set is that ever since the release of the Legendary Bortosk, it has been unbound and is therefore usable on any ship in the game. So if you're a fan of the flagship technology set, but you don't have the Timeline Stabilizer yet, I would definitely recommend picking it up. Number 3 is going to be the Lucari Hokun Science Vessel. Like with the Kranum Science Vessel, you could probably make it work as a science vessel, but it is vastly overshadowed by much more modern, easier to obtain science vessels too, so I wouldn't worry about its stats. In fact, if you really want to play as a Lucari ship, go for the Drenor. But the reason to talk about this one is, again, its console, the Protomatter Field Projector. If you like tank builds, support builds, healing builds, stuff like that, this is definitely going to be an interesting console for you. In fact, even if you just want to improve the survivability of any of your existing builds, again, this is a good one to pick up. What this console does is apply a 3km AoE around your ship. Yourself and any allies caught within the AoE will receive massive buffs to shield regeneration and hull regeneration, meaning they will receive some very impressive heals over time. Not only is this console useful for keeping nearby allies alive, but at the same time it's really good as a panic button to keep yourself alive, meaning it's really useful for either group or solo content. Honestly, if it weren't for the DPRM, which also gives a massive hull regeneration buff with its active ability, you would probably be seeing a lot more people using this console. But that's because the DPRM also gives a really big damage buff, which the Protomatter Field Projector does not. This one's just heals. This console is also part of the Alliance Multi-Mission System set. This is the console set available from the Tier 6 versions of the Vesta, as well as the Gorn and Romulan versions, and of course the Legendary Vesta. This console set I don't think is nearly as impressive as the Flagship Technology set, but there are still some consoles in there that do have some decent applications. Or at least can serve as decent budget alternatives to some of the more expensive science consoles. So if you're already using those, it might not be a bad idea to throw this into the mix. But even if you're not using that set, this is still a very impressive heal console. Another thing to note, and this one's more on the topic of Space Barbie, there are three different playable Lucari ships available in the game, the Hakun being one of them, 
the Draenor, which can be purchased as a fleet ship as long as you have a sufficiently leveled fleet. And what was the tier 5 one called? The Nakam, that's the one that looks like a flying saucer with RGB lighting installed. While of the three ships, the Draenor is the best one stats-wise, the costumes for these ships are interchangeable. So if you have the Draenor, but you like the look of the Hakun or the Nakam better, if you own either one of those two, you'll be able to use its costume on the Draenor. And the same applies vice versa. The Nakam is a tier 5 ship. It is actually a lockbox ship, but because it is a tier 5 lockbox ship, it's actually very cheap to obtain on the exchange. So yeah, just wanted to point that one out there for any Space Barbie enthusiasts. And the last one on this list is the Breen Plesh Troll Heavy Raider. Like with the others, the actual playable stats on this thing really aren't all that impressive. The only thing this thing really has going for it is the fact that it is a heavy raider. And if you're actually wanting to play as a raider style ship, then I would recommend looking at either the Adamant or the Eagle in the Sea Store. Either of those will be way more fun than this thing. Its console is not only unremarkable, but it is also unusable on ships that aren't Breen ships. That's actually true of the entire hypercooled technology set. But the reason to look at this ship is for its starship trait, Cold Hearted. With this trait slotted, activating auxiliary power to emergency battery, or what we call aux to bat, or any pilot bridge officer ability will cause your energy weapons to inflict foes with a debuff which slows, drains power, and reduces damage resistance rating. A debuff that can stack multiple times. For a long time, this trait was part of the DPS meta. It fell out of favor because, one, it was kind of quietly stealth nerfed, I think. I don't remember the whole story on that. Someone let me know in the comments if that was true or not, because I, I don't remember. But the other reason you don't see this one all that often is because Ox to Bat kind of fell out of favor too, because we had other methods of reducing the cooldowns of bridge officer abilities, like improved photonic officer or Boimler effect. But the old Ox to Bat method is more budget friendly, so there are still plenty of people still using that to reduce their bridge officer cooldowns. And whether or not you're still using Ox to Bat, it does still also trigger off of pilot abilities, so if you're using a pilot ship, all the better. Compared to the other ones that we looked at, this one is very much in that number four spot, but it's still worth looking at. Now, while these are the best four options, I think, that are available in the Epic Phoenix Prize store, don't let that hold you back. If there is another ship in that store that you're looking at just for the sake of Space Barbie reasons, or you just think it's neat, or you just want to screw around with it, don't feel like I'm telling you what to do with your prize, because that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to give you information to make an informed decision. But there's nothing wrong with picking up something like the Ferengi Nandi warship if you want to make a Ferengi Space Barbie character because picking up the Nandi is certainly going to be easier than picking up the Quark Marauder out of a lockbox. Or if you're wanting to make a Breen-themed character, there are three other Breen ships in this store. Side note, the Chelboag warship, that's the canon one from Deep Space Nine, which is the, the T6 version. Or there's the Vorgon Yudajara Dreadnought Cruiser, which is an absolutely bonkers ship because it has a 3-5 weapons layout. That's three weapon slots in the front and five in the back. Honestly, I don't think we're ever going to see another ship like this. Even the Kobali Samsar Cruiser, in my opinion, is probably the worst ship available in this store, but on the upside, it'll make Spencer say terrible. That's always funny. But yeah, as always, the best advice I can always give you is pick something that you think you'll enjoy. So yeah, those are what I think are the top four ships that you can get with an Epic Phoenix prize token. But as I said in the video, I don't want you guys to feel like I am telling you what to pick. You gotta just pick what you think is going to be the most fun for you, because not ever, not everyone is going to be interested in following the meta or what is going to make, you know, their make the DPS numbers go up in their build. Sometimes you just want something that looks kind of goofy looking or kind of interesting or just looks kind of fun. There's a reason we say that Space Barbie is the true endgame. So yeah, feel free to go wild. Anyway, be sure to let me know what ship you're going to be picking with your Epic Phoenix prize token down below in the comments. And while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And as always, if you would like to further support the channel, you can hit that button down below that says join to become a channel member, or you can find the link to the merch store down there. Uh, and you can also use the affiliate links to either the Epic Game Store or to real merch, whether you're shopping for video games or for model starships. Uh, either one helps me out, and I really do appreciate when you guys use those. But either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.